Hey, welcome back to Bow Ron Basics with Matt DeBlast. Today we're gonna give a quick talk about how to count like a drummer. You don't need to know much music theory to play dance music. Uh, it's helpful if you know some, but being able to count and, and do what we call subdivisions, which is breaking down the beat into different syllables and different pieces, really helps understand understand the rhythm. It helps you keep track of where the, the one of every cycle of uh, rhythm is, which is vitally important when you're playing percussion or any sort of uh, dance-based music like Irish traditional music. So we're gonna start with the idea that every unit of rhythm can be called a measure. And in measure, um, in, um, let's say real time, it's into, break it into four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, uh, a beat that takes up a whole measure is called a whole note for obvious reasons. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Half note, the same idea, half the measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Quarter note, same idea. Now you notice though, there's not a lot going on rhythmically yet. And we usually play faster that, which means smaller subdivisions and smaller pieces of the rhythm. But we don't have any more numbers to use. And we're not gonna start counting in, uh, in fractions or decimals. Uh, what we're going to do instead is we're gonna use extra syllables. For the eighth note, which is one eighth of a beat, so twice as fast as the four beat, we're gonna use the syllable and. One, and, two, and, three, And then when we break it down into 16th notes, um, we're going to add E and a uh to the pattern. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And you will, in ornaments, use what's a 32nd note, which is even half of that, but there you really don't count them out loud so much. If you did, it would be more like a one d, a d a, that you'd add like a diff in between the other syllables. Let's let's just go as far as one e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a diff. So, and you'll notice I'm. You know, I'll do a pulse or something to accent where that one is. Uh, because that, again, is really important. No matter what you do and how fancy you get, coming back to that downbeat is what really keeps the rhythm rolling along. If you saw what I did there, I did a couple of uh, single-ended triplets. So sometimes the one would be on an upstroke um, because I changed my accent pattern around. But because whether I was playing an upstroke or a downstroke, it didn't matter. The one was still in the same place in regards to the rhythm. And that's where really having a sense of how you count and how you break stuff down helps. Speaking of which, triplets. When we count them, you know, we're counting our rhythm one E and a two E and a one E and a three E and a. And usually the triplets we play on the end of a pattern will be fit into an eighth note. So it'll be that and, so one E and a. But we'll, um, they put three beats into the uh, three, three notes into the space that would normally be two. So one E and a two E triplet. And as I've mentioned before, you just say triplet out loud. Triplet. Not triplet, though. Triplet. One E and a two E triplet. One E and a two E triplet. And if you do it the single-ended version, one E and a two E triplet. One E and a two E triplet. One e. All right. So that's how to do stuff in four. We have one, 
We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1e e into 2e e into 3e e into 4e e into 1e e into 2e e into 3e e into 4 and triple it. Uh, how about jigs though? Jigs are not in 4 and they're in groups of 3. You're not just going to count on triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it because that confuses with the actual triplets. The way to count jigs is we're going to count them by breaking those 4 uh, four beats. The 1, 2, 3, 4 will remain the same. But instead of and, we're going to count 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3. Like 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3. It's hard to count it out loud and do it at the same time. Even for me, after and I've been doing this a while. But you should be able to at least do this in your head. 1, 2, 3, 2. Like that, and some jigs are um, more. They're in a six six beat pattern, so you can one two three two two three one two three two two three one two three two two three one two three two two three. Um, whereas some you'd use that full four, like more what would be considered a slide. One two three two two three three two three four two three one two three two two three two three four two three. And that's how you count. And again, the triplet would be the same, but trying to count that while you're counting a jig can sometimes drive a little nuts. You can go a little nuts at speed, but still that sense of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. When we get to slip jigs, slip jigs are in nine instead of six or twelve, which means there are three groups of three. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Which if you're playing, you know, the 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 jig pattern I taught you, which is the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up means every other measure of three, your one beat is going to be on the upstroke. One, two, three, two, two, three, up. So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Down, two, three, two, 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 three, two, three. Up, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Down, two, three, three, two, three, two, three, three. Which is where having that sense of where the one is. And you can, if you're trying to do it out loud like I'm doing here, you can always one, two, three, and two, two, three, and one. I'll get more into that, but the really important thing is knowing not only where the one is and how to break these things down, or have, it's important knowing where the one one of every cycle is and how to break it down. And that lets you do further, like one, two, uh, when you get to like say a four beat pattern. Let's do this again. kind of break up what you're doing and find more complicated patterns. So instead of just one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four E and a five <laughs> five. One, two, three, four E and the one and two and three E and the four E and So if you always know where your, your beats and your subdivisions are broken up and where that one downbeat is, you can start doing more interesting patterns and think more or learn more interesting patterns by listening to them and be able to break them down and count them uh, without getting lost. Uh, you know, having your sense of one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one e into two e into three e into four. Being able to break your beat down into patterns like that keeps that rhythmic cycle going, keeps your sense of the downbeats keeps your uh, rhythm consistent. Also, when you play something slower, it's often easier to count it by adding subdivisions. So if you're trying to count one, three, four, one, it can be harder to uh, to keep your your timing consistent than if you one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a by adding those extra subdivisions in between the beats you actually play, it makes it easier to keep track of where you are and not get lost. So there we go. Counting like a drummer. See you soon.